Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the sponsor yield? Certainly, Speaker. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, you and I talked about this bill last year, and I want to go over a couple of things. Uh, any idea what the cost of these water tests would be? Because it seems to me that this year, I may have been there last year, but now it's got, uh, looks like radium testing in there as well, which will certainly increase the cost. Any idea what these costs are going to be per test? No, that's not true. Uh, right now, the, right, this would require testing for bacteria, sodium, nitrates, iron, manganese, um, all volatile organic compounds uh, that will be, you know, for the, which the maximum contaminant levels have been established um, and led. And the Department of Health, uh, in consultation with the DEC, would then determine if there are any additional parameters that needed to be um, included. They might want to include arsenic or radium or mercury. If in those specific areas of the state there are issues regarding those, uh, per, those um, elements. Okay, so not mandated, but potentially. No. But no, it's, it's only potential if, if, for instance, in a particular area of the state um, that rate, you know, radon is, is, is an issue, right. that, then that will be something that might be included. Yep. But it wouldn't be included in, in, in all of them. That okay. would only be determined given the specific area. Which would certainly increase the cost in that specific area. But, but any idea, just on a general basis, what this test is going to run? Is it 50 bucks? Is it 600, 1,000? Any, any cost? Generally, we, we, we're looking at about $350. 350. How many labs in the state are available to do this testing? I don't know. No, I'm not certain as to number of labs, but, but you have to recall this is on the sale of a home. This is not as if we're talking about every home in every area right. uh, that would be required, although it certainly would be recommended that homes have uh, yearly testing. But um, no, this is, this is um, what, uh, only on the sale of a home. How many real estate transactions in New York State last year? And how many uh, actually have private wells? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm those asking. are numbers that I didn't spot the bill. I'm just at. asking how many, how many real estate transactions that had a private well. Quite a few in this area, maybe less so in the city, but to do some research. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Okay. The number of that. I don't know either. I, I'm just, I was curious. Um, any idea on the time it takes to complete this testing? That's a tough one to answer because the more real estate activity there is, which we want, uh, then the longer it's going to take to get these done because the labs will be backed up, and which is definitely a limited number of labs to begin with. This, this doesn't change the testing time. It could be a 48-hour test, but we, we're giving it within, we, we want the results within 10 days. We're giving it that kind of, of time frame. No, I understand. You want the results reported within 10 days of completion of the test, right? But if we're in a real estate boom, uh, hopefully that occurs and we have a lot of sales and transactions going on. Uh, Stands to reason, you have a limited supply of labs, you can have a lot of testing that is now, if this bill becomes law, required to be done. You would therefore create, I would expect, a bottleneck in those limited number of labs. So that would be my question. Is there any, uh, any uh, idea how long, just the normal test, let's say there's nothing, uh, there's no bottleneck right now. Does it take two weeks, 10 days, a month? Has anybody reached out to these labs? Uh, you know, we're not. It, it really will de be determined by region, um, but you, people who are understand that on the sale of their home, they will have to have their well tested, uh, do have 12 within 12 months to do that. So they could actually do it a few months prior to the sale of the home, uh, and hopefully they've done it every year, uh, so that they themselves know that their well water that they're drinking is safe. I don't see that. We haven't seen that in Rockland County or in Westchester where, where we have the, that legislation, that there is any indication, there's been no indication that that's a problem. Uh, and, and quite frankly, when we first did that legislation, I sponsored it in Rockland County. When, we, when that first happened, it, it, there were an enormous number of homes that were, that were discovered that did have contamination. And it was very shocking. But as it's moved forward, it's something that people understand they need to do on a regular basis. And it has not had a backup. There has been no issues in late closings. It, it, um, actually, it, it is 
actually helped the sale of homes, especially with private wells, because it provides the opportunity for the purchaser to know that the, well, the home that has a private well is not contaminated. So it, um, it encourages them to purchase that home. Well, wouldn't it be incumbent? I mean, I would think, as someone who does mortgages for a living, uh, and I do plenty of them on private wells since I served uh, Rensselaer County and Columbia County and Green and Washington, there's a lot of counties around here that have private wells, and we encourage them to get that tested. And the onus really, I mean, I would think if you're smart enough to enter into a real estate transaction, you ought to be smart enough to know that you should get your well tested if it's a private well, and if you're not smart enough to do that, I'm not so sure you should be buying a house. So my point there would be, why can't the free market handle it, which is what's been going on since we've uh, created private wells, if you will, since we've dug wells. I mean, why can't the private, uh, the, the free market handle this? Why do we need to mandate yet another cost onto the people of New York? Because it's worked just fine up till now. Well, it seems to me that when you have areas like Dutchess County and even areas of Rockland County and other areas that people were assuming that there, there was a, a sense that, there, that those selling their homes were being honest about the well water and then wound up like in areas like in Chester, New York, in Chester, um, where people were not aware that when they purchased their homes that they had a well, well water contamination caused by road salt storage. So while I would, I would say that I would hope that we can trust people who are selling their homes, that they would be honest and, and forthcoming regarding the well water and lack of contamination, it seems to me that if we really truly want to protect our families and protect our children, that w it's such a simple thing. When you purchase a home, you know that the well water has been tested and your purchase will, will, will be clearly indicate that you have safe water to drink. And when you drink a, a public water supply, I, I have public water supply, I know they are testing it on a regular basis. Why not assure that a private well is not tested so that when you purchase a home, you are assured of safe, safe water to drink? I, I don't disagree with you that it's such a simple thing. It's also such a simple thing for the purchaser of the home when they enter into a contract to say, I want this water tested. That's what I did when I bought my house before we had uh, a, a city, if you will, municipal type of water system. And the reason we put that water system in where I live in Melrose is because we had a, uh, a, a, a gas station that was leaking. Okay, so I, I don't disagree that these wells can become contaminated, but it wasn't mandated. It was that these wells were contaminated, and then the town decided that it was the best thing to do to put in the municipal system because those wells were contaminated. But there was nothing mandated there. So my point there is that there's no reason. It's a simple thing to do. You don't trust the seller of your house. That's like saying, oh, I trust that the electrical's up to code, and I trust that the roof is fine. You don't trust those things. You get an inspection done. Same thing here. But we don't necessarily mandate that you're going to have your roof inspected and mandate that you're going to have your electrical inspected or the plumbing inspected. That's my point. I'm not saying this isn't a good idea. I'm just saying this can be and should be handled by the private sector. Unfortunately, many people who purchase homes are not aware about the the need to have well testing. I came, from, I came from Brooklyn when I moved up to Rockland County. I, I had no idea about wells, about private wells, about testing. And if the seller of the house, um, without asking those questions, I would never have known to, to ask a well to be tested. And that happened in any areas. And the sellers say, everything's fine, the water's good. Uh, they, they pay $500 so they don't have to complete the disclosure statement. They, and, and then they, there is an assumption and a misunderstanding and that, that everything's fine, and then you have a purchaser who has been deceived. Wouldn't this then be... deceived in a way that could impact the health of their children and their families. So we can't assume that everybody understands exactly what needs to be done, and they understand that, well, it, and they're making the assumption. Here is, you know, they're trusting the person who's selling that home, that, that they are providing a you know, water supply and water that, that it does not 
or for any that well, does not have any contamination. We can't you, assume that. You because get back we've to seen my in too many cases in too many situations around the state that when when you make that assumption, people are deceived and then they there it impacts their health. So is this a question of people being deceived or a question of public safety and health? Because I guess it's perfectly okay for the people and those children that we're worried about that are living in the home, it's okay for them to drink contaminated water. That's what this, this is what this allows. Because as my colleague said, if you're really worried about the water, then you'd be requiring the testing on a yearly basis of every private well or every whatever the time frame would be. Could, so, I mean, this bill suggests that it's okay if your kids are drinking contaminated water, if you already live there, that's fine. Well, you know, it, we, would, we couldn't possibly uh, have the oversight to be able to suggest that everybody should have test their water every year. Although, to create this kind of legislation and when you purchase a home and you understand about well testing, and then there is this education about the need to do that, what has happened and what we've seen happen in the dialogue that I've had with many residents in Rockland County is that then they have an awareness that they need to do this on a regular basis. And the Department of Health would provide that kind of information to the communities to be able to share that information and then I have a well testing education law that would help that as well that would offer education about the need to have a, your well tested on a regular basis. Now you don't have to have it tested for these wild parameters regularly every year but it is important to educate the community that well testing is essential and that they should do it on a regular basis and this is a way to begin the process that you're suggesting is important. I, I don't disagree, again, I don't disagree with the intent of what you're trying to achieve. What I am disagreeing with is, uh, is the government getting involved in this. This can be done with a disclosure. You could require a disclosure on the contract. You should get your well tested. We do that a lot on FHA contracts. Unfortunately, we, we require or we suggest that you get first-time homebuyer education. Sometimes we require that. Uh, we suggest, but don't necessarily require. You know, it's an informed consent type of thing. It's an informed. Uh, you know, there's a whole list of things that we're informing people of when they're buying a house. This can be done that way. This doesn't have to be done with the government stepping in. And the other thing that I can tell you will become a problem, you've got one county, uh, Rockland County, where you've made this a law, correct? As far as I know, where it's, where it's in place in Rockland. Might be another one, I don't know. Westchester as well. Westchester as well. So you roll this out to a state of 19 million people. You have limited labs that can do this. You have 60 days to close a mortgage transaction. That's it. It's 60 days. Rates move all over the place, and trust me, I don't like it when they move up if I haven't locked the person in. I don't like that at all. So rates move all the time. You really can get into a situation here where the rate expires. Is there anything in the bill that would handle that where the person suddenly applied at, let's say, I don't know, 30 year, about 4%. At the end of 60 days, we've had a couple of things happen where all of a sudden the rates are at 4 and a half. I've seen them move half a percent in a day. It's unusual, but it happens. Maybe they're at four and a half, maybe they're at four and three quarters. The person barely qualified at four. They were able to get through at four, but at four and a half, four, seven, five, they no longer qualify for their home because they're waiting on a water test and they can't close. And as far as I can tell, the bill says that you, a uh, waiver of these requirements would be prohibited under the bill. So you could cost people their home doing this. This, this has not been an issue in Rockland or Westchester. It's two counties. I'm yes, talking about well, rolling it across and, the whole and, state. You know, actually, maybe they'll become, this will give an opportunity to do, for more labs in New York State, and we have jobs and new industry. <laughs> okay. I got it. All right. I doubt that, but maybe. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ellen. I appreciate it. Mr. Speaker, on the bill. On the bill. This is another in a series of job-killing bills today uh, here in New York State. Uh, all well-intentioned, but this particular bill uh, would really put a damper on an already suffering and struggling real estate industry. There's no reason that if you're entering into a contract to buy a house, I would assume you have the intelligence uh, to read those contracts, and if you don't, I would hope you have an attorney on a purchase, because every single person I've ever dealt with on a mortgage has had an attorney working with them on those contracts. You have an attorney, and almost every time you have a realtor, uh, unless it's a for sale by owner type of deal. I have never, ever, and I've done thousands of them, never seen a purchase take place without an attorney, even between families. There's at least a bank attorney there. 
This can be done with disclosures and everything else. We do not need the state stepping in to mandate one more thing that puts the, uh, the, the squeeze onto an already struggling economy in New York State. I'm urging a no vote. Thank you.